We end off Kuf Zayin Ahmed Base, uh, 107b, seventh line from the bottom, last two words, Amar Shmuel. So we're in the midst of Allah's of uh, trapping on Shabbos and the prohibition of uh, killing and trapping. So Amar Shmuel, Shmuel said, Asher Dagman Ayam, somebody who pulls a fish out of water, and Rashi and Tosis point out, that this fish, uh, we're talking about that it's already been trapped. So it's in a pond uh, uh, that's, that's considered trapped, a small pond, or it's in a bucket, or a Shabbos, whatever it may be. It's prepared, and, and therefore it isn't a question of trapping it. But if he pulls it out of the water, it's killing it. So, Kivin Sheyovish Boykesela Chayim. As long as, as soon as one sela size of, uh, which is a coin, of uh, of the skin dries out, that's going to be considered um, having killed it because it'll no longer be able to swim properly. Therefore, it's not going to be able to survive in the water even if you threw it back. This is talking about not anywhere, if it dried anywhere, but rather if it dried between the fins. So if it's near the fins, it's going to have a difficulty swimming after that and it's going to die. It doesn't have to be completely dried out. If it becomes slimy on account of uh, uh, the dried out enough that the slime on the fish became, it starts becoming um, strand, like it will let strands come with it when you touch it, that will define it as dry enough that um, that uh, if you took it, if that uh, if an area the size of a cella d- dried with, uh, within the, um, on the skin of the fish, it counts as having killed it. Amar bar hamduri, Amar Shmuel, and Emma Shmuel. Hoshit yodel mei behema v'dildil uber shivimeya. If he sticks his hand into the womb, into the uterus of a animal, and separates the fetus from the wall of the uh, from the w- wall of the uterus and essentially uh, kills it. Chayim is going to be Chayim. My time. Omar Rav Baramduri Azberli Baramduri explained Lav Omar Rav Shesha did not Rav Shesha say that Hai man the tolash kashusim mohizmi vehigi Chayim Hashem oiked of megidloi. That somebody who removes moss from uh, uh, from uh, shrubbery is going to be Chayim. Uh, because he transgressed removing something from its source of growth, even though that the moss itself, I think Kashu says moss, does not have roots in the ground. It's, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, living off of whatever it's on. Nevertheless, that's its place of, uh, um, that's its source of growth. And if you remove it, that is removing something from its source of living. So to over here, the the fetus being removed from the uterus is uh, uh, uprooting something from its source of growth. I'm Abaya, and Abaya said similarly. Hayman the Tolash Pitra. So we are now on Kufches Amar Aleph 108a. Somebody who detaches a mushroom. Meuna de Chatzva. From the uh, from an edge or from a handle of a of a vessel, uh, so it is an earthenware vessel that mushrooms are growing on. So he's going to be chayiv for uh, removing something from its source of growth. Again, this is not attached to the ground, but nevertheless, since removing it from its uh, from its growth uh, base. And that's why it's chayef. So similarly, in the two previous cases with the moss and the fetus, removing it from its source is going to be, uh, on Shabbos, is going to be prohibited as uh, a So with the fish from the water, isn't that the same thing? Fish don't live out of water. Why do we have to, why do we have to care that it's got a dry patch or whatever? If it took it out of the water, it shouldn't have, have the same din. No. It, it's not. It's not the place of gidulai. 
it's not attached to something that is uh, that is its source of life source. It, it's swimming around there, and it can find its life source any, a, anywhere in there. Oikir Dov means that it is attached to something that is its nourishment. But you could take some moss and stick it back on a. The fact that you can put it back doesn't mean you didn't take it. You didn't take it off of its source of 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 uh, growth. It's a it's a stationary thing, attached to a specific growth source. Must have Rabbi Shaya. Rabbi Shaya has a question. Hatoylish me atzitz nakuv kaiv. Somebody attaches something from an atzitz nakuv, which is a a uh, potted plant that has a hole in it so that it is. Uh, Attached to the ground, in other words, it's nourishing from the ground itself. So, chayiv. So then he's going to be uh, transgressing the Torah prohibition of detaching from the ground because and 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 picking something, harvesting, because he's attaching detaching it from the ground because the hole in the potted plant makes it as if it's attached to the ground. But if it's a non potted non hole in the potted plant, But if he's Picking a tomato from a plant, a potted plant that's not uh, uh, that doesn't have a hole in it, so it's not considered attached to the ground. Hot is going to be exempt. So how can you tell me any time you pick something from its place, that's going to be uh, um, uh, um, that's and you're going to be chayiv. You're uprooting it from its place of growth. Well, every potted plant should be that way, regardless of whether it has a hole or not. Why is there a distinction of whether it has a hole or not? And the hole makes it so that it's considered attached to the ground. Omar says that there's, uh, there is a distinction. Hasam lav hainaravisi. Tomatoes, whatever other potted plant you have, really its typical way of growing, the way it's meant to grow is from the ground. And you just moved some earth and is, is some dirt into a, a uh, uh, potted plant and and you created a plant in a pot if it doesn't have some connection to the ground it's not a normal way it's not growing in a normal way but mushrooms they don't need uh, they're not rooted in the ground they just need some surface with moisture that they're going to grow off of and same with moss they don't need that uh, that they don't need to be on the ground uh, and rooted in the ground itself and so it's typical for it to grow in these ways. Same for uh, fetus. That's where it's meant to grow. And so anytime you detach something from its a, a typical, uh, um, from its typical uh, source of nourishment, and it's, it, that's where it's set as its nourishment, you're gonna be high for that. I'm assuming when it says putter, it's putter basur. Is that correct? Yeah. Chain yeah. The- Correct. There's only the three places that, that that's not case that, that that generally that we say is not that um, it's going to be exempt and permissive. And this is uh, going to be prohibited. So in our Mishnah, it, uh, it spoke of um, the skins of an animal and a bird. So the Gemara is going to get into the halachas of tefillin and writing. Uh, uh, Stam writing Sefer Torah and Mezuzah on uh, chicken skin. So the halacha is that it uh, needs to be written on the hide of a kosher animal. What about a kosher bird? Amar Amuna Kesed Tefillin Al Gabi Ur Shel Eftor. You're allowed to write to fill in on the skin that has been turned into leather of a kosher a kosher bird. Amar Rav Yosef, my Kamashma. So Rav Yosef, what 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 have you uh, taught us? What are you finished? The Isle or that it's considered the skin, a uh, separate uh, hide ra- from the muscle. Tanina, we learned that already before that the, that the skin is separate. Uh, uh, yes, grief and Torah. So the 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 um, the the hide is separate, the skin is separate from the muscle. We already know that because we said that if it gets injured and the blood gets gets um, pooled between the muscle and the skin, that counts as a chabura, it counts as a wound. 
and and is a total prohibition. So we see that birds have separate skin from the muscle. Amalei Abaye Tuva Kamash. We'll know there's a big chiddush here. You know what it's teaching us? And if only from a Mishnah Havamina Kiva the Isbe Nikmi Nikmi Lut. That true that it's considered a separate skin. Well, maybe I can't write on it because it has holes in the hide in the leather on account of the feathers. And and so those uh, those holes would make it invalid. Kamash Malan. So that's why it's teaching us that it's kosher as a, a skin to write to fill in parshas on. Like in like we learned in in Eretz Yisrael, a hole that even though that you can look through it and you see the hole in the in the in the parchment made of a bird skin, but nevertheless, since the since the scribe can make the the ink go over it and the ink won't sink through. So that would count as a, a parchment that's, that you can write on and it's gonna count as, com, uh, as whole and, and not as, it's co- as complete, as full, and not like it has holes. So Rabbi Zeri asks a question. It says in regards to uh, um, uh, the Carbon of an ola, the bird that uh, where the, the the skin is going to be a part of the carbon itself, and we don't say that it's a waste. Rabbi Zeir Bechnafav, it says in with its feathers, with its wings, uh, to tell you that you're allowed that a part of the carbon is also going to be the the skins, and it goes on the mizbeach. The Yisak or who, and if you say that it's skin, it's separate from the carbon, how could the verse tell us that it goes on the Mizbeach? It's, it's skin, it's, it's separate, it's, it's waste. I'm gonna buy a oru for Rahman and Ravi. I don't understand what the question is. That yes, it is skin, but nevertheless, the Torah is saying that this skin, chicken skin, or, or sorry, uh, there's no chickens on the Mizbeach, but the dove skin and turtle dove skin can go on the Mizbeach, can be a carbon, even though it's a, a, a bird skin, and it is skin as waste. But for bird skin, the Torah says it, it's a part of the carbon. Some say, actually, the Rav Zeri uses this as a support, not as a question. With its wings, to tell you that even the skin goes on its back. Now, if it's separate, that's why I need a Pasuk to especially tell me that it can go on its back. To add and say, even though that it's really not part of this muscle, it's a part of the skin, it's a waste a product. And nevertheless, can go in the But if you tell me that it's not a part of a, a, a separate part of the animal, it's a part of the muscle and flesh itself. So am I it's what I need a postular rabbi to tell me that it can go in the mizbech. I need a special postic to include it. Um, it's it, after all, it's just a part of the carbon. It's a part of the bird that was brought as an offering. Abayi says, no, perhaps I can tell you it's not a part, of, it's not a separate skin, it's part of the carbon of so, And I, nevertheless, I need a Pasuk to tell me that it can go on the Mizbeach. Since it has holes but on account of the feathers, so it's it's not so nice. Kamash Malan, therefore it tells us that that uh, with its wings, that it can go on the Mizbeach. Um, even with the outer layer on. By me name, Marbury de Ravina Marav Nachman by Yitzhak. Marbury de Ravina Asher Nachman by Yitzhak. Mao licht of Tulun Agabi or shall dag tar. So we know uh, it needs to be a kosher animal, and we included uh, not only uh, uh, hides from bovine, not only hides from smaller animals. And now, not only, uh, not even that, but you can even use uh, the skins of birds. What about fish skin? Can you write to fill in on fish skin? You tan it, you put it through the process, and you make it into a into a leather. Can you write on it? Now, Amar Lei, Im Yovi Liovim. Let Eliyahu come and tell us. My Im Yovi What did he mean by saying let Eliyahu come? 
Mayomer and tell us, whether, is he going to come and tell us whether it's separate from the flesh and it's considered a skin independent of the flesh or is it really just a part of the flesh? Now that we already know uh, that, it ha- that it's separate, we can tell that it's separate, the, the fish skin is separate from the flesh itself. At least the kosher fish and then it would have to be kosher so we'll see any and besides we learn that uh, all the um, fish uh, fish skins and the fish bones would uh, act as a barrier for tumor. So this is an interesting proof because the Allah is that uh, not only uh, is, is typically a, a bone not a barrier, but a bone itself could be a source of tumor. In 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 um, uh, uh, other animals, and uh, uh, we learn that from Davra Bamani Izin, anything that comes from the goats, because it mentions goats, to tell us in Tuma, to tell us that uh, even the the hooves and and uh, and the horns are included in uh, 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 vessels that are susceptible to Tuma. Uh, and items that are susceptible to tumma, and anything susceptible to tumma cannot be a barrier, barrier for tumma. It itself is susceptible for tumma. Can't bear, it can't block tumma from traveling. But it excludes fish bones and fish skin because that's different, and uh, um, uh, it, it's not included in when the Torah includes goats. Uh, fish is not included, and therefore the fish bones and fish skins are not success, susceptible to tumma. And since they're not susceptible to Tumah, they themselves would act as a barrier. So if somebody uh, pass away in a certain, in, in this room and, the, and in, the, in the room next, next door, sharing the same roof, is, there's a window going through there to, uh, uh, that could cause the Tumah to go from one room to the next, but it had been sealed up with a fish skin, right? So then that would cause a, a, a block before the tumma, since itself is not susceptible to tumma, it is um, a, a cause of barrier. So, so we see that it counts as not the fish itself, which is food and for sure susceptible to tumma, but rather it's separate from the, uh, it's separate from the uh, muscle. Ella, so rather what he meant when he said, if Elio will come and tell us, whether the tanning process, the, 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 the process of turning the skins into a leather, into a, a, a parchment, whether that's enough to remove the smell and the, and, and, uh, what, uh, the, the zuama, which is the, um, uh, I don't know, it, it, it means more than smell, it's the, it's, it's the, the, the bad substances. I don't know how art school <laughs> translates it. Yuckiness, it says. It says yuckiness. <laughs> well, what, what word does art scroll use for Zuhama? Stench. The stench. Okay. Uh, I think it's more than just the smell. Zuhama is usually uh, all the yuckiness combined. So yuckiness it's is more a smell and film. It's like a film and a smell and a uh, yeah, it, 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 it's all forms of, of the of the grime. negative off of put what like grime. It's like- yeah, all that could be zuama. In any case, so in this process of soaking the skins in this solution, which usually turns it into a into a, a um, which will usually turn it into a leather or into a, a, a parchment that. The question for Elio is going to be, is that, is this sufficient process to turn fish skins into non-disgustingness in order to be able to use it for, uh, for writing? Umar tells us a story. Um, it, it's, it, it's both uh, uh, peculiar in its placement and in the story itself. Shmuel and Karna were sitting on the river, on the banks of the river Malcha. And Chazinu Lamaya the Kadalo Achiri saw the waters were rushing and and were dirty, were un, were not clear. 
Omar le Shmuel le Karna, Shmuel set the Karna. From here I can see Gavar Rabba Kasim in Marava. There is a, a, a great person coming from Eretz Yisrael, Vachayish Bemaye, and he's, un, he's un, not well in his, uh, uh, he's got a stomach ailment. The Kadola Maye, the Kabuli Ape, and the water is rushing to greet him. Kame, uh, get up. And Ziltai uh, and go and check him out. See what, how you know who he is, what is Akan Kane on his on, go uh, basically go knock on his jug to see what what kind of uh, uh, what kind of stuff is in there. Um, the Gemara tells us in Baba Kama that Karna had a, a, a an exceptional ab- ability to as a sommelier, as, as someone who can can taste wine and he can tell you how what it was made of and, and how long it lasts and whether it started started the process of going sour, etc. So he was uh, he was very good at that and so he used that as a metaphor. Go 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 knock on his barrel and see what's in there. In other words, go go check him out and see what this chacham is. Uh, and Karna was a dayan. He was a, a, a rabbinical court judge in uh, in Bavel. So he came to uh, to see who had arrived, and it was Rab. As uh, we learn, Rab and Shmuel were contemporaries, even though Rab was older. And Rab had remained in Eretz Yisrael to study under uh, Rabbi Yudah um, and somewhat under uh, uh, Rabbi Chia. Uh, eventually came to Bavel to, uh, uh, to lead the academies there. So uh, when Rav arrived, Karna went to check him out on, on Shmuel's, uh, with, by Shmuel's mission. And Shmuel being a, a, a doctor, as it says in the name of Rabbi Hananel, Shmuel being a doctor, wanted to heal him. So in order to check him out, Karna asked Rav, how do we know that you write to fill in only on a kosher animal hide? Because it says in the Pasuk of Mantia, so that, that the uh, uh, tefillin is meant to be put on your head and your hand, so the words of Torah will be in, uh, uh, the, the, so that Torah of Hashem will be in your mouth. You know, the simple meaning means so that you can, you'll remember it and you'll study it and that'll be your, your um, uh, the, the utterances of your mouth. But the drash is, because since it doesn't say so that the words of Torah will be ever flowing from you, but rather that it should be in your mouth to tell you that it has to be that the film is made of uh, uh, something that is permissible for you to eat. Now, this is how do you know that blood is red? It says, because it says that the Moabites saw the water that had been stained red by the blood. Okay, so that's how we know blood is red. I didn't know that a circumcision of bris mila has to be in that place on the male organ. So nemar kan orlosa, because it says over here, um, the bris needs to be orlosa by his orla. Uh, and it says, and it says in regards to the first three years of a plant, of a tree, that it has to be, that it has to be orla that uh, you have to leave the tree fa- um, fallow for three years. Just as over there, it's talking about something that can be fruitful. So to over here, we're talking about Brismila, we're talking about the organ that is, uh, that uh, multiplies, that is procre- procreation will come from. Maybe it means from the heart. As the Torah says in Apostolic, it says that and you will uh, circumcise the, the arla, the covering of your heart. Uh, or a ma'azna, maybe it means his ears. It says that your ears have become clogged, covered. Uh, that, uh, that their ears are, are clogged. Arla. Sorry? Arla. Arela. Arela Aznam. Their, their, their ears have turned, uh, yeah. Arela has turned um, uh, clogged, right? So it uses that same word, Arla. So done in Arla, so Tama, Arla se Tama. Now we compare where the Torah says, uh, uh, or 
our la so in its complete with all the letters um, uh, as opposed to just Arla. Uh, so our la so uh, uh, his Arla with all the with, with the five letters. They learn our lasso from our las. So we look at the comparison of the exact word, which is uh, in, in its complete form, which is our lasso from the tree to tell you that it's the place that, that is uh, fruitful. So Rav, after answering questions, asked as uh, Karna, what's your name? So he said Karna, which means essentially horn. Amalei he rava the tepek le karna beine horn should come out of his eyes. Uh, uh, now I'm not sure if that's uh, uh, a blessing or or a curse. I don't know what the what the meaning is. Does it mean that a rocky one, curse? Is it a curse or a blessing? The rocky say takas enos. Your eyes should be black. Is it yeah. Form his eye. Uh, they, uh, yeah, that, that I, it could be that's what they say, but I don't know where they get that from. Um, it, it doesn't mean that his his vision will be strong and penetrating, um, or does it mean that he's going to have something wrong happen? I don't know that it's a curse or or a blessing. I don't know. Say Eileen Shmuel Kate say Loy Karen Beenon. Which means you think that could be a positive? Yeah, that his vision is going to be piercing. He's, it says Rev uttered the curse because he was in pain. Karna held him up for questioning. So, yeah, no, I, I, that, yeah. what he realized that he was being, you know, tested there, that I understand, but I don't know whether this is a curse or not. I didn't see any source that said that this was a curse. I looked around, couldn't find it. In any case, I let Shmuel obey. Shmuel brought him home. Ochle Nama the Sara. He gave him a barley um the keys of the harasana. And uh keys of the harasana is 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 uh fish brine made out of fish guts. Vashke Shikra and he gave him beer to drink. However, Vlayakhvale Besakise, he didn't show him where the bathroom is so that he would contain himself and Shmuel was trying to heal him, Shmuel being a doctor, was trying to heal him from the ailment that he had predicted that he had. Um, uh, but, but didn't tell Rav, I'm doing this to heal him. So Rav was, uh, very, uh, was in a lot of pain. So Rav cursed, why are you, you know, who's this? Why are you guys painting me like this? Somebody that's giving me all this pain. Uh, should not have sons. The Chain Hava indeed, Shmuel did not have sons. Right? So uh, I'm not sure of the placement here or, or uh, uh, the reason here. I mean, the placement we get because it says that the, in, in, in kosher an, that this, the kosher animal is why, uh, where do we know that the, the hides of Tefillin have to be on a kosher animal? But we said that earlier already. Here we're talking in the midst of whether fish is okay or not. Okay, so the Gemara now is going to continue with the conversation of Karna's questions. So, Ketanoi, this is really a machlo ketanoi. Minayin la milo shabosimah. How do we know bris mila is in that in the male organ? Namar kan or lo. So it says over here his or lo. Namar la halan or lo. And it says there by the fruit tree his or lo. Malah halan davar shoyz a peri. Just as over there, it's where it's fruitful. Afkan davar shoyz a peri. So to over here, uh, and we're talking about where it's fruitful. Dever Rabbi Yashi. That's what Rabbi Yashi says. However, Rabbi Nasan. <coughs> Rabbi Nelson says, or some say it's Rabbi Yonason says, Ain't uh, it We don't need that uh, comparison. Hareyo Omer, Va'oral Zachra, Shalima, Basar Lassi. It says in a male uh, uh, that is uncircumcised, Makim Shaniker, Ben Zachra, Sanakvas. We see it's based on the distinction between male and female. Tonabana, Kusit Fila Gabi, or Behimatahara. The Bryce says that you're right to fill in on the hides of a kosher animal. Whether kosher animal, domesticated or chaya, non-domesticated, or novelos or trefus, but it doesn't have to be that you can eat that particular animal. It's even if that animal died without shechita, or if it had a trefus. Nevertheless, the hides are going to be kosher because it's from the type of animal that's kosher, like 
a, a, a cow, even though if the, even if the cow did not have a proper shechita. And the part, the and the um, parshia, the parchments that the, you wrote the 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 the, the, the sukim on, have to be bound with a with a, with um, hairs from the kosher animal. Uh, so it can be used from there. When it for and the the box of the film, the bias has to be uh, sewn together. So that's sewn together with the sinews, with the uh, gidin of uh, these kosher animals. And we know that this needs to happen on account of Allah Sinai. This is tradition from Sinai. But you can't use a non-kosher animal's hide for uh, to fill it. And for sure not an, a, a non-kosher animal that died without shrita, uh, uh, meaning it died on its own. That's for sure a problem. But I don't understand what the for sure is. Why would shrita even change that? If somebody shechted uh, a pig, uh, uh, in a proper way, that would have, I would have thought that the skin was more kosher for tefillin than beforehand. I'm not sure there, there is no concept of shechita for such an animal. In any case, the Brisa says uh, for sure not such an animal. Why couldn't you use the gidim? You could eat the gidim. You could eat a gid from a from a from a from a, from a, from a, from a It's not considered. It's not food. It's not meat. That is so. You can't eat it. It's just that it's so inedible that if you chew on wood, uh, it, it's kosher, right? It's okay. because it's not food. That, so that, the reason that you're allowed to eat it is because it actually is non-edible. So hey, you so can't why, t- that, that doesn't count as you can eat it. Why not get him a vehemot mea? Why could you get him at least? Why you would can, you? It's, hey. not about, it's not about, uh, uh, it's not, uh, the, the type of animal is not kosher. It's not about whether you, uh, you, you're talking about chewing on something that's not really edible and therefore it's permissible, but it's still from a non-permissible animal. Okay. You're not okay. allowed to eat a, uh, that animal. So you can't eat a trafe a, a tra- animal, a, 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 a tummy animal. Well, you can't eat it. But here, why, why, what would be the problem with getting it? Because you're not allowed to eat that animal. It comes from an animal you're not allowed to eat. The very fact that it's not edible doesn't change the fact that it's from an animal you're not allowed to eat. It's from an animal that you're not allowed to eat. Right. Uh, uh, the question is the other way around. The question is, why are you allowed to use a, an animal, that a, a, a cow that didn't have proper shechita? I can't eat the cow. So why can I make the tefillin on the uh, on the hides of that animal. Because the, the tefillin doesn't have to be edible. The hides don't have to be edible. It has to come from the type of animal that's kosher. The and you can use the hairs of a non-kosher animal to, uh, to bind it, as far as and you can't sew the boxes, the batten together with the sinews. And this question was asked once by a uh, uh, by a uh, by Tusi, which is one of the uh, uh, one of the splinter groups that didn't believe in Torah uh, uh in the time of Yeshua Garsi. Asked him this question: How do you know that you're not allowed to put to fill in right to fill in on on the hides of a, an animal that, uh, that from an animal that's not kosher? So let's say pigskin. It says, because the Torah of Hashem needs to be kosher for your mouth. Elamiyati says, well, if that's the case, I like I mentioned before, well, then even a kosher animal, if it wasn't shechted properly, and you're not allowed to eat that meat, so then it should also be prohibited because that particular cow, even though it's coming from a cow, but that particular cow wasn't kosher because it died in natural causes or, or, or it had a trefa, it had a a blemish and flung or whatever. He said, let me give you a, 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 a metaphor. Two 
two people were were um, uh, sentenced to death by the government, and one the king himself killed, and one uh, the the executioner killed. Which one was greater? The one that the king killed. Uh, so uh, so uh, this animal died by natural causes, so that's better for Hashem. So he must tell me, so then why can't you eat it? That's not, that's because the Torah said you can't eat it. You want me to eat it? He said, oh, that's a beautiful answer. Um, and, and as is typical, this is not the necessarily the correct answer. It's just the answer that was given to the challenger. But the, uh, the answer is, that what, we're, what the Torah means is that it has to be of the type of animal that's kosher to be eaten, but it doesn't have to be the, the, obviously the skin doesn't have to be edible. So too, the skin doesn't have to come from a particular animal that was shechted in a way that's edible. It's just that we're talking about the min, the type of uh, animal it comes from, it has to be the type that's kosher to eat. Enosin Hilmi B'Shabbos. You can't do and make Hilmi, which is a type of brine. Uh, you can't make Hilmi in Shabbos. We're now in Kuf Ches Amak Days. Avalesu es Me'amelech, but you can make salt water. V'tovu ben Pito, in order to dip his his uh, bread in it, v'noisel techatavshol, to put into food. Amra v'yesi v'alei hu Hilmi be'meruba be'muat. Well, it's Hilmi, it's a brine, regardless of whether it's a lot or a little. And this is um, salt water. And that's permissible. First, you put in some water, some oil, either into the salt or into the water. And then that will make, make it less likely that the salt will dissolve properly. And therefore, um, it's not going to be a really heavy brine, a really strong brine, which is prohibited. Because the brining is, is, is a form of uh, it's it's like tanning. It's working the the uh, the the um, food. It's making it uh, change uh, changes uh, makeup. So my Amar. So what does it mean? Amar of Yehuda Amar Shmuel Lachik Amar. In Oisim Me'melach Merubin, Avol Oisim Me'melach Muatim. It means you're not allowed to make a a, a heavy brine with a lot of salt, but you're allowed to make a, a, a simple salt water. Which is less, which is not a strong brine. On Rav Yosi and Rav Yosi responsible, who heal me be merubim be mulatim, but it's a brine either way. It has a little bit of salt, a lot of salt. It's all the same. Iboilu Rav Yosi lesser lahatir. Is Rav Yosi trying to be lenient or is he trying to be strict? Amar Rav Yehuda lahatir. He's trying to be strict. Medule katani Rav Yosi oser. Since it doesn't say that he prohibits. Uh, so he's being lenient. Sorry, Amar Rav Yehuda Lahater. He's being lenient. But the look Amar Rav Yosi because he doesn't say that he prohibits, means that he's trying to be lenient and says, if you allow me to make any amount of salt water, well, there's no distinction between a lot of salt, a little salt. If I can make a salt water, I can make a brine. Amalei Rabbe Hamid Iktani Sefer Ve'elehin May Melach Mutarin. Since at the end it says these are the salt waters that are permissible, Mechalag Rav Yosi Lesser, which indicates Rav Yosi prohibits. So rather, Rabbi Yossi wants to say that it will all be prohibited. Rabbi Yossi is being strict and says, no, since I'm not allowed to make a brine, I'm not allowed to make a simple salt water either, unless I do it in this way where I add oil. Tanya Namelach, indeed, the Bryce says this way. You're not allowed to make a brine with a lot of salt in it in order to uh, to to marinate something, Shabbatel Gistura, that's in uh, 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 earthenware vessel, um, which they would they would soak uh, they they would brine things in. Avalaisu may melech muatim, but he can make a little bit of salt water. and pita, and he can dip his bread in it. Venosel techatavshil and put it into his food. Amar of Yesi, to which of Yesi says, "Vechim bnei shalom merubim va'alolam muatim." Because you made a small amount that's going to be permissible. If you made a large amount, that's going to be prohibited. So I'm allowed to uh, light a small fire, but I'm not allowed to light a large fire. I'm allowed to, allowed to write a small letter, but not a large letter. Of course, 
Malacha is prohibited regardless of how much I do. So if it's, I'm not allowed to make salt water because it's a brine, so who cares how much I'm making? Ella, Elove Lasurim. Rather, they're both prohibited by proving that he's being strict. Rather, how is it permissible to make a brine of salt water on Shabbos? This is Shemina Melach. You put in oil and salt, or Shemina Mayim, or oil and water, prior to putting the, combining the water and salt. You add oil to one of the two ingredients. As long as the salt and the water don't come together first, you put in oil to either one of the ingredients, that's going to be okay. He's in Sinai Ve'eser Ximen. So, Tani Rabbi Yehuda Bar Chaviva, Ein Oisim Melach Azin, you can't make very strong uh, brine on Shabbos. So, my main Melach Azin, what does it mean a strong brine? Rabbi Rabbi Yehuda Bar Abba Amr Tavai, they both said, Kol Shabbat Zetzafa Ben. If an egg will soak, will, will float in it, that's a very, uh, 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 that's very salty. The Kama, and how much is that? It's two-thirds salt to one-third water. It's a very heavy ratio. What would somebody make this for? This is made for Murius, for uh, this, uh, salt, this salty um, fish brine that was made out of, uh, out of fish guts that they would dip their bread in. Sounds fantastic. My son, Matt, claims that this is fish sauce. It's what? what? Like in Thai cooking, fish sauce? That that's basically what it is. I don't know. Fish sauce is made out of fish guts with uh, two-thirds salt water. This, is, this sounds, you know, pretty strong. But I don't know. I'm Rabbi Abba Lemurais. It's made from Maurice. You're not allowed to salt um, a radish or, uh, or egg on Shabbos. Rav Chizkiya said in the name of Abaye, Tznon, Aser, radish, you can't salt. Beitza, Mutaras, but eggs are okay. Amar Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman said, Merei Shabba Melchana Pugla. First, I would, I would salt my, my radish. Amina, Afsudikam Afsidna. I would say that the, the uh, um, you're, 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 it's wasting it, it's damaging it. Mavsinle, the Amar Shmuel, Pugla Chorfi, Mali. Because Shmuel would say that very sharp um, uh, radish is actually good for you. Kivin the Shaman Allah, Aha, the Chiasa Ula. But when Ula came from Eretz Yisrael, and I heard this teaching from him, Bama Bemaravi Malchi Kishri Kishri, that in Eretz Yisrael, they would salt the, each slice of, uh, of the radish itself and not really let it soak for too long, but they would salt, put a little salt on it. So I wouldn't salt it, meaning let it sit in a brine, but I would, uh, um, I would uh, dip it into salt before eating. An esrog, a radish and an egg. If not for their outer shell, uh, and Rashi says by egg, it doesn't mean the shell, it means the, the um, egg white. Any other would never leave the body. In other words, it would clog our internal systems. Ravdimi came from Eretz Yisrael to Bavel. He said, you know, the, you've heard of the Dead Sea, you have the, the salt water sea, the, the Sea of Sodom. That water, nobody ever drowns in there because you float. Wow, Sodom got turned upside down, and it also, its uh, uh, stories are upside down. You, you have water that people don't sink in. Wow, a, a person won't sink, but a, but a log would sink. I said, no, let me buy a kama. Let me buy a kshura. Not only would a log not sink, which even other waters also, they don't sink. But even humans that usually would sink in waters, a person would not sink in the Sodom in water. In other words, the Dead Sea. What, why do we care about this information? Like Ravin taught when he came from Eretz Israel. He was walking near the, uh, near the Dead Sea. Am I allowed to take some water from 
from the soul, from here on Shabbos and rub it on yourself because it, it's, it has healing properties. And as we mentioned uh, the other day, Michael mentioned the other day, the halacha is you're not allowed to put on potions on Shabbos if you're not um, um, more seriously ill on account of that you, you may come to make a, uh, a potion, which is grinding. Amalei, shaper dami. Yeah, you're allowed to. Ma'u lememetz alamiftach. Can you uh, put it in your eyes, which is going to help the eyes? Amalei zula shamati. Yes, I didn't hear about that, but I did hear something else. And tomorrow we'll continue with what's, what potions are healthy for the eyes and what can be done on Shabbos.